Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu. Wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His forgiveness. And we ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to shower His peace and blessings upon the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and upon his family and companions and all those who hold firm upon the Sunnah until Yawm Al Qiyamah. This is a continuation, lesson 10, I believe, inshallah, of important lessons for every Muslim. And this book was, compri was comprised by al Shaykh Al-Allama Abdul Aziz bin Baz Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And we are up to Surat Al-Ma'oon. Ba'da a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ara'ayta al-ladhi yukadibu bid-deen. Fadhalika al-ladhi yadu'u al-yateem. Wa la yahubbu ala ta'am al-miskeen. فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراءون ويمنعون الماعون الله says have you seen him who denies the recompense that is he who drives away the orphan and urges not the feeding of the poor so woe to those who pray but who are heedless of their prayer. Those who do good deeds only to be seen and withhold simple assistance. This is chapter 107 in the Quran, verses 1 to 7. It is called Surah Al Ma'un based upon the last verse in the Surah, referring to those who withhold. And we'll come to the understanding of that meaning, insha'Allah. And it is also known as Surat al-Deen. Surat al-Deen based upon which verse in the surah? The first verse. So these are the two names that this surah is known by. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Have you seen... And this is speaking to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Have you seen, O Prophet? This question, usually, how many times have we come? Just through this durus in the last uh, chapters of the Qur'an, have we noticed questions being posed? And what's the purpose that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala uses questions in the Qur'an in order to what? <coughs> to draw attention to the listener, to convey amazement, to the listener in order to capture their attention. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have you seen the question? Have you seen him who denies the recompense? This is the person who denies what? Yawm al qiyamah the day of resurrection, the recompense. Standing before Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and meeting him. And the one who denies the day of judgment what is this person? What is the ruling on such a person? Kafir. The one who denies day of judgment is a kafir. Denying the recompense also means he denies the legislation that has been established for him. The sharia, the deen, which has been established for us. That which the people are called upon to practice, it's upon us to practice this deen, based on the tawheed of Allah and making the religion sincerely for him. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, That is he who drives away the orphan and urges not the feeding of the poor. Now, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, this surah, this, this series, insha'Allah, the purpose of the series is not to go into too much depth of the durus. It's in order to get an understanding of the suar that have been 
studied and understood. But wallahi, there are so many virtues and lessons just merely in this surah alone that not even one or two durus can cover how much is mentioned within this surah, subhanallah. In regards to this verse, from the results of this denial of the recompense, so from the results of those who deny the day of judgment, they neglect the day of judgment, the ruling upon them is that they are kuffar. And we know believing in a day of resurrection is one of what? One of the six pillars of Iman. Barakallahu fikum. So we know there are six pillars of Iman. And it is upon every single Muslim to have believed in these six pillars of Iman. And if one denies any one of these six, what are they? Considered a disbeliever. Falling out of the millah of Islam. Falling out of the fold of Islam. Billah. So from the results of the denial of the day of judgment is that this person has these traits and this condition. The traits of what? The fact that he drives away the orphan and he urges not the feeding of them. So he, he gets rid of, doesn't like to help the orphan and he does not tell the people to assist the orphans. This is one of the traits of these people. He drives away the orphans. He severely rebukes them. This is the trait of such a person. He severely rebukes the orphan, repelling them and driving them away harshly. He does not deal with them with kindness and mercy. And let us just think about the orphan. In any community, in any religion, it should be seen that the orphan is shown kindness and mercy. It's the orphan who is the most that is considered in a, in a weak state or in a troublesome state in need of help. Because their parents are not a lot around or the father is not around. What is the ruling, first of all, do we know of an orphan? What makes a person fall under the category of an orphan, just so we know as a term of, of understanding. Does anyone know? His father died. If a person, his father died, then he's 30 years old. Is he an orphan? Then when is a person up to what age is he considered an orphan? Before he begins puberty. So if they lose their father before puberty, this person is considered an orphan. And this was the condition of the Arab before Islam. And Islam adopted the same concept. That a person who is father, the mother could still be alive. And he will still be considered an orphan. But when the father has died and has passed away, then this person is considered an orphan. So in this understanding, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when was he considered an orphan? He was considered an orphan right from the get-go, as soon as he was born. Why? Even though his mother was alive, his father was not alive at the point of even when he was born. He died before he was born, sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah says, and urges not. He does not encourage others. Not only does he rebuke and harshly treat the orphan, this person who has denied Yawm Al-Qiyamah, he also urges others not to help this orphan. Subhanallah, someone is kind-hearted. They have that mercy, that gentleness, that kindness within them, that they wish to assist the orphan. This person rebukes even them. He tells them, drives them away, urges them away from fulfilling such a, a deed. Fi sabilillah. That this person has got to that extent where he pushes the person away from even helping such an orphan. And urges not the feeding of the poor. This is because he does not feed the poor himself. He himself has no mercy for the poor. This person has no lutf, has no gentleness, no mercy, no kindness towards those who are in need. The needy, the poor. Or does he spend upon them? So how can he encourage others to do that? So when he himself does not feel the need to do so, as a matter of fact, he rebukes those who are in need. 
then he urges others not to do so either. Up until the point where you may hear sometimes, well, وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ They say that if Allah wanted, he would have given them. But Allah didn't want to give them. So why should I give them? Subhanallah. We hear even these words from the mouths of these people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from even meeting such a kind of person. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is something that insha'Allah ta'ala we should all focus upon bidnillah. Well, Allah says, so woe to those who pray, but who are heedless of their prayer. Then Allah described them as those who pray. Allah, in this verse, has described a different category of people. The second category of people, those who do pray, they perform the salah. So they do not abandon the prayer, but they are heedless of it. What does this mean? Yani they pray, bisallu, but they are heedless of this salah. They delay it from its appointed fixed time. And they are not concerned with its conditions, obligations and pillars. Now, just to stop here for one moment, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, yuqimuna salah, yeah? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they uphold the prayer. What does it mean, the difference between yusalloon, that they pray, and the difference between they uphold the prayer? Does anyone know the difference between the two? Upholding the prayer, you give it its rights. What are the rights of the prayer? Fixed time. Conditions. They're the three. Upholding the prayer, giving the rights to the prayer, is that you fulfill the conditions, pillars, and obligations of the salah. These are the three things that a person, a Muslim, a believer must do in order to give the salah its rights. So when one is heedless of his salah, as mentioned in the verse, when one is heedless of his salah, then they have become from those who have not fulfilled the conditions, obligations and pillars of the salah. This is when a person has become heedless of the prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The difference between being heedless in the prayer and being heedless concerning the prayer. This is different now. The prayer is that being heedless in the prayer is when the person forgets and must do prostration of forgetfulness. So when one is heedless in their salah, it often happens to the believers that when they are within their salah, for example, they're praying duhr. In their salah, the second rak'ah, what are we meant to do at the end of the rak'ah? In duhr. We're meant to sit. We're meant to do our jalsa and we're meant to read our tahiyyat. Correct? Sometimes we're heedless in the salah. It skips the mind. You forget. You stand up and it's too late to sit back down. Does it occur? Yes, it occurs. So this person hasn't fulfilled an obligation of the prayer. So then it is upon that person to make the sujood of forgetfulness. These are from those who are heedless in the prayer. Tayyib, what about those who are heedless concerning the prayer? This is another type of person. The one, the calamity of being heedless concerning the prayer is when the person delays it from its time. And is heedless of its conditions and pillars and obligations. So he doesn't pray it on time. What do we know? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say regarding the prayer and its time? Inna salata mawquta. So the salah has be, been appointed upon the Muslims at given times, at appointed times. So can you pray asr? 15 minutes before Maghrib, this is not the time for you to pray the prayer. Up until the Asr time, in order for you to pray, it's from the Adhan of Asr up until the sun. Do we know when? The sun has turned a certain color, yellow. 
yellow. Till the sun has become yellow. This is the time for your Salat al-Asr. Your Salat al-Asr should not be prayed after that, otherwise a person is considered heedless concerning their prayer. Then if they haven't fulfilled the conditions of the Salat, the conditions being that a person being in wudu, for example, is a condition of the prayer and so on. Insha'Allah will come to study these bidnillahi ta'ala in the near future. Thus the prayer is not a great action to him. When a person is heedless in regarding his salah, he doesn't give it much importance. Isn't that the case? When you don't care, khalas, I'll pray it when I get the chance. What is this person? More than just lazy. This person is heedless towards his salah. He's not giving his salah importance. This person has not given his salah the justification that it deserves. The importance, the concern, the need that each human must be giving to his salah. And it does not have any status to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Now, just as a point of reference in regards to this, because this is a very important topic. In regards to our salawat, we know that it's important. It is the which pillar of Islam? Do we know? Let's ask Musa. Do you know which pillar of Islam salah is? So the first one, shahada. What's the second one? Salah. Yes? So it's the second pillar of Islam. It is the connection between the slave and his creator. When one prays, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala what are you doing just a bunch of movements and saying a few words getting the matter over and done with and moving on no it is rekindling your relationship with Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala it is begging from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which every single one of us is in need of if we were to just read surah al-fatiha we will see how much we are in need of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. That we recite that very surah at a bare minimum 17 times a day. And that it is from the pillar of the salah. And we must understand that. We must know that. In order to be able to give the salah the status and importance that it deserves. And that it needs. And that salah is from the fulfillment of the purpose of our very creation. That many people live their lives 20, 30, 40, 60, 80 years not knowing what their purpose of creation was. But we Muslimin, what do we know? We've been know, told from day one what the purpose of our creation is. Do we know what it is? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created jinn and man except for the purpose of worshipping me. And the fard form of worship that we know of, the most important after tawheed is what? Salah. Given such importance that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was raised above the seventh heaven in person, in person, in his bodily form, to meet Allah directly. In order to receive the order of praying five times a day. The obligation of praying five times a day. Everything else was sent via Jibreel. But Allah wanted to give such importance to the salah that he made a direct order from him to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we know from the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not from that which our scholars have said, or not from that which I have said, but it is the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said, Al-ahdu baynana wa baynahum as-salah, faman tarakaha faqad kafar, that the covenant between us and them is the prayer. So whomever leaves off the prayer, what has he become? What has he done? He has disbelieved. Tarik as-salati kafir. The one who believes the prayer, leaves the prayer has disbelieved. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And from the understanding of many of the ulama is that this is a major disbelief. Taking the person out of the fold of Islam, may Allah protect us. 
such to the point where Shaykh bin Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions that the one who dies without praying that his body is not to be washed janazah is not to be prayed upon them they are not to be shrouded in the shroud of the dead Muslims they are not to be buried in the burial places of the Muslims and they are not to be made dua upon saying rahimahullah ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this is the importance of the salah. This is the importance of the prayer. And I'm trying to give it just a short, quick understanding in order for it to be given its significance in this particular time now. But if we were to stop and speak about salah, wallahi, it's a much longer converse, a much longer dars bidnillahi ta'ala. Then Allah says, those who do good deeds only to be seen their actions and prayers, if they're doing it only to be seen, who is it for? For the people, for others, not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, يَقُومُ الرَّجُلُ يُصَلِّي فَيُزَيِّنُ صَلَاتَهُ لِمَا يَرَى مِن نَظَرِ رَجُلُ A man will stand to pray, and beautify his prayer because he sees a man looking at him. Now, in regards to this particular understanding from this verse, there are two types of people discussed in this surah. The first was what? The one who disbelieves in Yawmuddin. What is he? Kafir. And the second, the one... Who, so woe to those who pray but are heedless from their prayer. They're heedless concerning their prayer. What are they considered? They are munafiqeen. They are the hypocrites. And this is the second form of people that are discussed in this, this surah. Now, for those who would pray in order for others to see them praying, yet within them they have disclosed and they have covered the disbelief which they hold within their hearts, what are they? They are the hypocrites who have committed major kufr, that they have disbelieved. Then there are those who they do not disclose disbelief. They believe in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, but sometimes they would see a person as mentioned, in the hadith, and they would straighten their prayer, they'll beautify their prayer, they'll make themselves look good when a person, another person comes in. So what has entered into their actions? Riya. The hidden shirk. This is the minor shirk that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he feared for us. And insha'Allah ta'ala, we ask Allah that none of us are considered from the both, the two forms. But the one that we are very much warned about are those believers, the Muslims, who often tend to fall into riyah. He talks about Islam in order for people's faith to turn to him. Look at him, subhanAllah, how wise and smart he is. Whenever you speak about the deen, whenever you're giving a dars about the deen, whenever you're giving da'wah about the deen, your intention is for Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Your intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you feel for one second that it is because such and such is listening, because such and such is there, because people would say A, B, C about you, renew your intention, make istighfar to Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, renew your intention for the sake of Allah, in order to make it sincere action for Allah. Because as he explained last week, two conditions for every action, if they are not met, they are not accepted. The first being what? Sincerity, Sincerity for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Second being ittiba' which is following the sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and withhold simple assistance. This is where the, the surah gets its name from. The ma'oon. Wa yamna'oon al ma'oon. The ma'oon being simple assistance. For, from their severe stinginess. And we've heard often in the suwar, previous to this, about the one who is stingy. 
We know without a doubt, shadow of doubt in our mind, that it is from the trait of a Muslim, the trait of a believer, the trait of a mu'min, who truly believes in Allah in the last day, that he is a generous person. True or not, he's generous with the knowledge that he has. He's generous with the wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. He is generous with the ability that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. May that be talent, may that be strength, may that be knowledge, may that be whatever it is that Allah has bestowed upon him. It wasn't his to begin with. Allah gave it to him. He thanks Allah for it and he shares it with the ummah. He shares it with the ummah in order to be rewarded by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So they are not stingy. They prevent small help. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's highlighted even the most simplest of deeds. And listen to what deeds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting here. They will not loan something like bowls. These people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to, they won't even loan a bowl, a plate to their neighbor. That which will be returned to them anyway. In the very condition that they received, they gave it, they will receive it. They won't even do that. They're that stingy that they won't give the bowl, the plate to their neighbor. Or such as that which is deceived, or axes, needles, and the likes from those items which neighbors loan to one another for a small period of time, although it will be returned. So these people from the hypocrites, from the attributes of the hypocrites in this circumstance, is that they won't even loan the most simplest of items to those that are close to them. They won't even loan such a thing to one another. So this is something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he rebukes. And it is upon us as Muslims that we do such things in order not to fall within this category. That we share from that which we have. We give from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. And how long have we been so far? Insha'Allah, we'll probably leave it at this, even though there was more to discuss, but I don't want the class to drag on for too long. So, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiraka wa atubu ilayk. Insha'Allah, questions will be taken live and the, the broadcast will be ended until next week.